Hi, it's Meg with Seed to Fork, and I'm here today to talk about trellising and pruning tomatoes. It is time for me to do it, and I wanted to just take the time to bring you along with my process. Uh, I prune to about three liters, and we trellis kind of two-dimensionally, almost like espalier. All right, so this is what I mean by espalier. You can sort of see a wire there. There's a wire down there. There's a wire up higher. These are four years in and we are training them to the wires and they're growing somewhat two-dimensionally. And that's what I mean by our tomatoes are somewhat growing like our espalier method. So I'm gonna take you through my process of how I think about which, which leaders to keep, which ones to snip, and how I go about um, tying them up against the trellis. I'll also walk you through how we set up our, um, our kettle panels. So anyway, I hope you find this uh, tutorial helpful for you and your tomato garden, and I hope it's a fabulous summer for you. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is talk you through my materials. I've got some twine, it's compostable, and it ends up going with the potatoes into the compost bin at the end of the year. And then I have these snips. These are mini snips from Fiskars. Um, I started using them this year for pruning, and then I also have, um, this is a, it's actually hand sanitizer but I'm using it for this because I've run out of rubbing alcohol out here and I clean it between each plant. It's really important. I don't want diseases to spread. So what I do is I spray it before I use, before I use it on any plant and then I spray it in between. So this is a Juliet right here and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of talk you through how I do this. First things first is I slowly, as the plant gets taller, I do prune up the bottom of the plant. I don't want these leaves dangling down at the ground level because of um, potential disease. This one too can come off. Okay, so the next thing I'm thinking about is how many liters I have. This is one of my liters that I wanna keep. So anywhere where it's suckering off, I'm looking for suckers, there's one right here tiny one. There's another one right down here. I'm cutting off the suckers. The suckers end up happening pretty much at every place where a leaf comes off of the main stem. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So this is one liter. This is two. And then we have, this is also suckering already. So I have to decide how I want this to sucker. So I've got, this is branching off of this main leader. So here's one, two, Here's three, here's four. And if we count this one again, that's five. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the little ones. That's one, that's two. Um, and then I might leave these last two. So that'll be one liter, two liters, three liters. And that's where I'll leave this plant. And you can see I've already got fruit set on this Juliet, which is great. Oh, and I see I missed a liter there. I missed a liter here. Um, let's see, I think that's it. So that's great. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this up now. All right, so I just wanna walk you through kind of how I think about my tomatoes. This is my leader right here, okay? So if I follow this leader all the way back down, all the way down, it it's forks right here. So this is a second leader that I let grow up. But if it comes all the way down, it forks here too, okay? So I can already identify my three leaders. This is leader one right here. This is leader two and this is leader three. Anything else that is sprouting is gonna get removed. So I see a sprout here. I see a tricky sprout right back here. Okay, those are big ones. And then there's all these little ones. You see them at every single leaf node there's sprouts so that's what i look for and i often start by trying to just see what i've done so at the beginning i do i try to establish two three if i can if i can only start with two i start with two and then a couple weeks ago i let these fork and so they have been growing really well so now i'm going to come in and i'm going to cut all these extra um all these extra sprouts here because they're going to be leaders. It's a vining crop. It's just constantly, constantly 
um, competing with itself for apical dominance. One of them wants to be the tallest. And I let mo a lot of people don't prune their indeterminates at all. We didn't used to. And then we did just one liter. Now we're doing multiples because you get a little more fruit off of it. But I will show you how I prune all of these. Okay, so one other thing I want to talk about is I want to just walk you through the difference between just a leaf versus a leader, because I talk a lot about this in this video. This is just a leaf. These are really important to photosynthesize and help the plant set fruit. Uh, it's giving a lot of energy to the plant, okay? A leader has leaves on it, but it also has young, young growth. It has immature leaves because it is continuing to sprout forward, okay? This leaf is not gonna send up a leader, except back at this node. This is a whole leader that came from a node eventually. Let's see where it came from. It came from right here. And this is the leaf that that leader came off of, okay? And this is the stem it came off of. It was, it, so does that make sense? There are still, leaves come off of leaders, right? Here's leaves off of leaders. But if you follow it all the way up, you'll find the actual leader. Here's another leader. Here's an, another leader. There's actually two here. Can you see them? There's two. And like, I, like I've been talking about, they always branch at the node, the spot where the leaf meets the stem. This is how tomatoes grow. So you want to... I like to just keep the number of liters on my plants to about three. It just kind of works out for us. All right, so I want to talk you through the panels and how we set them up. We use T-posts. These are seven foot T-posts that we pound in about a foot. Um, and then we use cattle panel, which is a little over four feet high. I think it might be 52 inches. I'm not really sure. but. We set it so that it's, it's plumb with the top of these T-posts. So then there's a little bit of a gap in the bottom um, and that's because it doesn't go all the way to the ground. And I do that on purpose, a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm trying to get as much, much height out of these panels as I can without using more than one panel because I'm trying to be just economical. Um, and then I really prune off that bottom bit of the plants anyway, as I talked about. So um, I don't really need a panel to go all the way to the ground, but to get my plants to the panel, sometimes I do need supports. And so you can see here, there are a couple of um, bamboo stakes. I sometimes use, there's a really big two by two right there. So I just kind of use whatever's around and I will tie the plants to those until they are um, tall enough to be supported on the structure. And the other thing you can see is that I'm filming this about a week after I filmed my pruning. Um, and I need to come back and prune again. I've got a lot of growth. Um, I'm not gonna do it today. It's too late in the day today. It's now Monday afternoon, and um, I really like to do it in the morning on a nice dry day. I might try tomorrow morning because I like to give my plants all day to dry. I don't like to do it when dew points are high. Um, don't like to do it when it's gonna rain. Um, I want those fresh cuts to heal as fast as possible. So I even like a windy day would be ideal, a dry windy day because the longer that the cut is open, if it's humid or it's gonna rain, disease could enter the plant that way. So um, really good to try and prune only 
on dry days and also always use clean um, always use clean implements like I showed you earlier. So the other thing I want to talk about is how we secure them. We use zip ties. We just use really simple zip ties. They are a single use zip tie, but it's what we found to be the best. Um, and we zip tie them about three places. We have to work together. So we are both one of us is holding one side of the panel and then we zip tie them together at the top and then we still have to hold them because they'll slip and then we zip tie them at the bottom and then we zip tie them in the middle. Um, and with these are eight foot panels. The posts are laid eight feet apart. You can see they're tight to each other. When I screw up and don't set these panels up or don't set the bed up to be in exact 16 foot dimensions or four foot dimensions of 16, you know, like 12 or 20, um, we have to seam them together and that's what happened here is we decided to do two eight foot panels it was like a 17 and a half foot bed here the way the tomatoes ended up and so we decided to seam together this is a 32 inch piece that we seamed together over this eight foot area um we maybe could have gotten away without it because you can see there's no i'm going to show you there's no tomato right here in between them but it gives the plants more room to spread out and sprawl and we'll be a lot happier so I hope that this makes sense and it's helpful to you. Um, and I will continue to give updates on our tomato garden in my monthly YouTube videos. So look for those and um, thanks so much for watching.